welcome back hope you guys are all doing well in the last episode we finished off our spider and bee castle in today's episode we're gonna be taking on a brand new project and this project i'm particularly excited for because it's going right above my masa each and every single one of these pillars right here are gonna be a floating island and i'm gonna explain to you guys exactly what i have envisioned for this project now i've already taken a little bit of the liberty to try to put together a little bit of a palette so this side right here this is going to be from my floating island palette so i have like a gradient that works its way all the way up to moss we've got the sails or yes you guessed it i'm going to be building a flying ship kind of think about peter pan when you're thinking about this because i'm going to be bringing the mushroom islands to the masa which is our mesa that we're mossifying slowly over time to make it a little bit more lush I'm choosing to use the mushroom blocks and the bone blocks. I think those are going to go really well together for the sails of the ship. I'm going to go with a monochrome red for the ship. because I think that's really going to stand out with our contrast block being the dark oak block right there. And we're going to be doing the deck of the ship utilizing the white terracotta. I'm very excited. So like I just touched on before, each and every single one of these pillars are going to be floating islands, but I want to have like floating islands with cascading waterfalls falling into the Great Lakes or the Mossa and everything like that. I haven't got another big build planned for this area right here. So this area is going to remain untouched. And then of course we have the skull clans that are just over there, which I have a build that's basically going to take up that entire space right there. But I'm going to start focusing a little bit more on the floating islands in this region, seeing if I could potentially figure them out. But we need to do something before we get into that, and that is collect resources. So let's get into that. But of course, before we get into that, if you haven't liked the video already, please like the video because it really helps out the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing because it's free. I'm hoping that's enough mushroom stems to carry on with the build got about half the island left if i need to come back and get some more mushroom stems which brings us up to a little over nine stacks and if we need any more i've got some mushrooms that we can grow in the masa all right with all that resource gathering out the way i guess it's about time i stop procrastinating and start mapping out a little bit of these islands here trying to go for a little bit more of an organic look but i'm going to procrastinate a little bit more and i'm going to start getting rid of everything underneath the yellow pretty much and then i can start doing some wireframes and seeing exactly how these floating islands are going to look so yeah wish me luck i think we're on the right track i've got something a little bit more organic looking i've got all the islands kind of set up in place but let's take a little bit of a closer look on this island in particular trying to make the island look as organic as i possibly can with erosion and stuff obviously this isn't textured yet but flying up up here I can show you guys a little bit more of what we got going on. So I've got a little bit of the moss set in place. I plan to put like water up here and like maybe a little island in the middle where I can have a mushroom growing out. And then as you guys can see, a little bit of a mountain, like these little like boulders. I've just been doing like two by twos, just trying to like build up the train here a little bit. And then on this side, I have a little bit of a landslide that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to need a lot of coarse dirt and mud to move forward with this project. And here's just one more look at the island. I am absolutely in love with the shape of it so far. I just got a lot more islands to do, but I'm standing on where I want to place the boat. And I think that's a perfect location for where we want to put the boat. This is pretty much going to be the bottom of the boat and our sails are going to take up a lot of this negative space right here. And I want to surround all the islands around the boat. But this boat might actually happen sooner than later, to be honest. And that's mainly because I have a lot of stuff to figure out. A lot of these islands are just wireframes. So I might actually end up moving where the islands are located, focused around the boat. So that's why we're probably going to take on the boat sooner than later. But before we take on the boat, I want to get back over to this island. I want to get this thing 100% fully textured, decorated, so I can show you guys exactly what I have in mind. But we might need some mud. And let's check up on our coarse dirt here. That should last us, but we're definitely going to need some coarse dirt as well. So let's just take this and put it up with all of our other resources. And as you guys can see, the shulker monster is growing. Speaking of growing, check out my island. 
It's a lot more textured now. Added a little bit of bamboo, some highlights. This side's a little bit more earthy. This side's a little bit more stone. Pretend as if that netherrack isn't there. It's just to hold back the waterfall because I'm not ready for that yet. Added in a little bit of a, uh, a pond up here that's going to cascade down into the lake down below. But moving forward, I think I want to build a big red mushroom right here and maybe like a brown mushroom over here. I think that would look really nice. So far, I'm absolutely loving the way that this is looking. I think this looks incredibly organic, which is exactly what I'm trying to go for. Adding in little bits and pieces of color, some highlights, and a little bit of shadowing as well. So let's go ahead and let's get these mushrooms put in place and let's finish off this island. And there you have it. The mushrooms are now in place. Got one brown mushroom over here and one red mushroom over there. I even did the cascading waterfalls, which I'm going to show you guys some cool things to do with that here in a moment. With a little bit of the trees in the background of the island as well with little pops of color. I think this looks absolutely gorgeous. And we've even gone as far as to making sure it's properly lit up. As for the waterfalls cascading down, one going all the way down to the actual lake itself, and then this one kind of dissipating a little bit into a little bit of a misty fall, kind of halfway. I thought this was a really cool effect using a bunch of different types of glass. And then this one, I'm kind of messing around with the idea of doing like the underwater plumes with the lichen and even using the candles over there, potentially going to make some flowers. But let me know what you guys think about the island so far. Because I must say, I absolutely love the island. I think I did a phenomenal job when it comes to texturing this whole area and even detailing the island itself with a bunch of different blocks and stuff like that. Let me know what you guys would change. But let's get into the next step. And what might that next step be? Well, laying out the boat, of course. Now, this is most definitely going to be the biggest boat I've ever made in Minecraft, let alone a flying boat. And you can kind of take in a little bit of the island in the background here, but... I have my mast in place where I'm going to be putting all my sails. My sails are going to go on an angle here. And of course, before you guys ask, no, the boat's not going to be made out of granite. Remember, my pallet is up there and I'll give you guys a quick reminder of what that looks like here in a moment. But the reason why I want to use the granite is the granite really makes it very easy for me to count exactly how big I need to make a block. Because remember, I don't use Limatica for any of these builds. So this is all being freehanded here. The stern of the boat. I think it's uh, shaping up a little bit. I've got like the balconies placed out where like I'm going to have my doors, my windows, and these little like areas over here are going to indicate a spiraling staircase, which I think is going to work out beautifully. And a quick little reminder on what the palette's going to look like. We're going to be going with a monochrome red with dark oak as a little bit of an accent piece, maybe some spruce a little bit later on down the road. And my sails are going to be made out of mushroom stem and bone blocks as the patchwork. And of course, positioning is absolute key here. So I want to make sure that I'm centering a lot of the islands around the boat itself, making the boat take up a lot of that negative space. So I'm loving where that island plays. A lot of these other islands might actually move. And another really key important thing to know is, well, since I'm building this boat for Maddie and it's her majesty of mushrooms, I also wanted to bring in another element. And that element is... Pigs. So you'll notice I got a little bit of a prominent snout here, some eyes, and this is where the doors are going to go. She absolutely loves pigs. So I want to make this not only for mushrooms, but I want to have some certain little elements of pigs as well, because I think that would be absolutely adorable. And I think it's fair to say that I got a lot more laying out to do. And of course, I'm going to be shaping out the bottom of the boat and the front of the boat, the stern, the bow, the mast, the sails, you name it. And I'm thinking I want to try to come up with a figurehead of a mushroom out here in the front that I can make as the focal point of the boat. Well, I think it's fair to say that I've got my work cut out for me in today's episode because obviously I got quite a bit more of the boat to lay out. The stern, the bow, the mast, the sails, you name it. So I should probably get back to work and give you guys a little bit of a progress update. Fast forward a little bit and we got the majority of the boat actually done up here, which I'm really, really liking. Now it's to actually replace it with the palette that I've chosen, which is going to be all the red monochrome that I've shown you guys. Right here, I'm thinking about potentially putting a giant anchor or a rowboat, just to kind of take up a little bit of that blank space. And 
I've got a lot of this stuff to basically work out when it comes out of colors and stuff. So I'm going to use mangrove for the most part, just to kind of see what's going on here. And then I'll use netherrack in order to like help out with the shading of the boat. And then I'm hoping the bottom, I don't know what this is called, like the vessel or the hull of the boat. I really hope that this works out really nicely. I'm kind of just guesstimating how big this should be. Hopefully this is a little bit more proportionate. And then I kind of came up with some nice like ornate shapes back here. A lot of this is also subject to change. This will be the captain's quarters. Up and over here. I'm going to leave this area a little bit more open. And then I'm going to basically come along here and put like a nice little fence and stuff like that. And then have an absolutely gorgeous view from all the way up here to look around the Masa. And when it comes out of these islands, maybe we'll make some like big giant grappling hooks or big ladders or vines. Whatever it may be, I would love to be able to connect up a lot of these islands. And then I can focus the islands around the boat. So I'm going to start replacing some of the boat with some of the blocks. And let's see if I can make this pallet work. Well, I think we've got a little bit more of the shape kind of done up here. Did a little bit of a shadowing effect with the mangrove here. I, I absolutely love the mangrove. I think the mangrove looks gorgeous. Didn't do any of the shadowing here because obviously this whole section of the boat is going to require a lot of fine tuning. Looking at it from down here... You'll notice there's a lot of flat lines and stuff. So tomorrow I'm going to be kind of shaping that out a bit better. That way when we're looking at the boat, we'll actually be able to see a little bit more of a concave or a convex or whatever that is. More of like the boat shape there. Absolutely loving the dark oak, by the way. I don't know what I want to use for the deck of the ship yet. So we'll figure that out. I was kind of leaning towards oak because I think the oak would look really good here in the trap doors. But that's subject to change, especially with all the sails and stuff like that. Because if I'm going to be going with white sails and then going with oak, I feel like that might not be a big enough contrast. So maybe spruce, maybe? Anyways, absolutely loving a little bit of the gradient on the inside here where we got the mangrove stripped and then we got the mangrove logs and then we got the, uh, the actual netherrack here. Kind of give it a little bit more of a color but back to shaping out the bow where i'm going to like do a little bit more refining on the nose and then start working up the back side and then i gotta start putting in the keel of the boat what's a keel well i'm glad you asked because i had no idea either anyways a keel is basically going to be like the divide in the middle of the boat that goes straight down the middle so maybe we'll go with like a nice like black stone something very defining to really bring out the shape of the boat so it doesn't just kind of blend into with one. You know what I mean? But yeah, that's a keel. Rhymes with heel. It's just basically going to go all the way down here. It's going to look really sick. And luckily for me, I did a bunch of resource gathering before this project. So I'm hoping to actually have enough mangrove to make this thing happen. Here's a little bit better of an example of what a keel is right here. So as you guys will see, like I'm basically going to divide up the boat. This was my very first boat, by the way. Don't judge me. But I'm going to have like the keel basically go straight through the boat and uh, divide it up. Well, fast forward, not that many hours because I haven't been killing myself over this whole front side of the boat thing. But I think I've got myself a little bit of a better direction here with the front side of the boat. I've made it a little bit less thin and like kind of smoothed out this archway right here. Now it's time to work on the back side of the boat and then we could put the keel in place. But wow, that's all I got to say. Um... I wish I had some water to hide the bottom of the boat underneath. That was, that was something else. All right, let's start working on the backside though. And there you have it. Got the whole keel put in place here, going all the way down and including a little bit of a rudder. I'm extremely happy with the way that the shape is turning out right now. There's obviously a couple things that I need to mold out, but I'm really liking it so far. We've got a lot of the mangrove in the back, a lot of the terracotta in the front to kind of give it that natural shadowing and over here did a little bit more like shadowing here as well we might put like barnacles on the bow we might put mushrooms growing off the bow we might even do bird nests on the bow just to kind of like break up some of the um the monotony going on on the side of the bow i don't even know if, the, if that's the right word to use here but anyways boat is completely shaped up except for this side but unfortunately, that's all the time that we're going to have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the island, enjoyed the boat that we have heavily under construction with only one side done. But 
without further ado obviously if you guys enjoyed today's episode please leave a like it really helps out the channel tremendously maybe consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next one